to another like for the journey. Thanks for joining us. We're glad that you're here. Um, if this is your first time and you're getting a notice on YouTube, well, or if it's your first time, you probably haven't gotten a notice on YouTube, but you're watching us on YouTube uh, that we've gone live, we invite you to join us at that web address right there, and you can become part of the chat where we all uh, talk. You can ask questions and uh, be a part of the, pro the ministry program here tonight. It is Easter Sunday. I am excited. Um, not only can you do that, but a couple housekeeping items. If you are on YouTube or you have an account, we would really appreciate it if you got on and you subscribe to us. Then you'll get notices that we've gone live. And um, like, certainly if you like it, like it. And if you don't, there's thumbs down. They can actually do thumbs down, Terry. Make comments there as I well. I would be so hurt. Light for the Journey is a, is a look at life through the light of Scripture. With me tonight is my co-host, Terry. He's back. Yeah, you're back. You came back for more. I made it through the yeah. Easter Bunny thing. You made it through the Easter Bunny <laughs> thing. Awesome. And behind the cameras and doing all the switching is his lovely bride, uh, Linda. Linda, we're glad you're with us. You make this. You make us look good. That's all I can say. She chases us around with cameras all over the place. Terry. She's the best there is. Yeah, isn't it great to be chased? I mean, you, she's still chasing you after all these years. I don't blame her. <laughs> well, she's back there. She's back there <laughs> grinning from ear to ear. Um, <laughs> but we're glad you're with us and uh, welcome you uh, uh, to to the show tonight. Today is is Resurrection Sunday, Easter. Most of us know it as is Easter Sunday. We mm -hmm. celebrate as a church. It's a high holy day for the church. Um, I, I was excited. We had in, in our uh, worship lineup, we, we had uh, breakfast. Always great when you can start as a church together with oh. breakfast. Nobody had to leave because they were hungry, right? That, 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 that's the truth, right? Nobody left because they were hungry. Oh, no. no. <laughs> I had a couple. John gave it's me. One thing in the church we seem to do really, really <laughs> well. <laughs> John gave me a couple of those pancakes. I couldn't finish them all. You know, I was like, I was going to have to get a wheelbarrow just to, just to get to the mm. platform. <laughs> uh, music was great. You guys on the praise team did an awesome job. It went job well today. today. It went well today for a lot of what was fairly new music. Thursday night we're going, huh, <laughs> <laughs> how come we haven't heard those before? Well, uh, how can you, how, how long have you been a Christian? Well, you got Christian and you got Christian. <laughs> you no, got I religious didn't. Christian and then you got more free Christian and only for what about the last, what, 30 years? Yeah, 30. There's a lot of music out there. It's, to yeah, me, it's kind of shocking. To run into these songs, it's like, how could we not have heard these before? Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, now some of those older ones, at least the nice thing about them is they're easy to pick up. Yeah. But a couple yeah. of these I was like scratching my head on. It's like, hmm. Ah. But they went so, really well by the time we sang them two, yeah. three times. It went well. Which one did you like the, the best today? Well, of course, the victory. Oh, uh, you, you like, know, yeah. I love that song. The victor's crown. Yeah. 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 That is that's an awesome. A pretty new song. Yeah, it is new. But, it is. Yeah, and you guys did well. You did well. I, I was proud of you. Did you see Tri Jean Tripp on her way down? She over no. the wires. Yeah. See, I knew. <laughs> so why we got to get some ushers to be up there to help these <laughs> women off the platform. Oh my goodness! Yeah. It's funny when us men fall. Oh, but it ain't funny when the women. <laughs> <laughs> but that's because we're in trouble. I already heard about uh, Debbie and Jean are getting on my case about getting those wires out of the way. What am I supposed no, to? No, I didn't see that. Yeah. Well, it's been a wonderful, wonderful day. Here we are this evening, wrapping it up yep. with folks. And um, I've got some stock questions here. I bet, you don't, I bet you're wondering, what, what's he going to ask me tonight? You know? <laughs> well, you heard, I mean, I'm sure you've heard a ton, a ton of messages from the Gospel of John about the, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Anything new today for you? Mm, no, not really. Just the one question about why she couldn't touch him, and mm -hmm. we've had that. You've explored that before? Well, the, if he's taking the place, Jesus is taking the place of all these sheep and cattle and all this stuff that have been slaughtered mm -hmm. for a gazillion years, and you think about that scapegoat where the sin was placed on the scapegoat, and he's sent out into the wilderness never to be seen again, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> but. 
And that's our sense. When I had kind of heard that idea that, you know, now he's gone through all of this. He's died. He's taken all that sin of the world upon him. And now he's died and that's gone. So that makes sense to me that, okay, now until he actually returns to the Father, now he's, he needs to be pure, just sure. as pure as can possibly <laughs> be. So when I had heard that, that made sense to me, that you didn't want any worldness, you know, okay. touching him until he goes before the Father. And I like that image. You know, it's like uh, I do too, after actually, he actually. goes through all of what he went through. Well, and the, and the point that I was making is it wouldn't be the first time that we were told not to touch the holy. Oh yeah, you know. Uh, Ask Uzziah. <laughs> <laughs> was that his name? Who who went out and, uh, yes. and tried to study the art? U z z i a h Uzziah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. You're better with names than me, then. That's well, all I can say. only because we're in that part of the Bible right now. Oh. When we do our morning Bible <laughs> studies. <laughs> We've just come through that part again. Now we're um, awesome. Uzziah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Awesome. De Katie, er, Debbie is talking, and she says, only when the chords are all over the place. Yeah. So, okay. Um, we're we're going to come back to that because I'm, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to show, and I want to make some, I want to make some points tonight <clears throat> about, you know, how when we read these accounts, at, at least in our minds as Westerners, we want all our ducks in a row. And so some, some of this stuff, and, mm -hmm. I, and I'll do a little ex explaining why some of the accounts from the different Gospels are a little bit different. Okay, I'm, I'm trying to make a little bit of sense of that. So we'll talk about that tonight. Um, so nothing new, but, but we talked a little bit about, you know, about the touching. Uh, anything you would have added? Anything you had learned about that text? Yeah, I mean, you've had to heard, yeah. you know, 50 sermons, I think, <laughs> yeah, that's the least. I mean, how many Easter's? Well, the Bible pretty much tells the whole thing. Yeah. You know, it's... I wouldn't want to been there when those angels showed up. Why is that? Well, so many times there there are positive, but when it when it ends up being like angels are scary. Angels are good when they're they're just uh, minister ministering angels are good okay but anything other than that <laughs> i don't want anything to do with them i mean you sit there and you read the account of when david did the uh counted his man mm -hmm. and uh yeah that was that was a sin that was one angel that was one angel wiped out how many like twenty-seven thousand, you know people and then finally, uh, when David goes up to the threshing floor and he's going to build an altar and he's going to do this thing, he knows he's done wrong, mm -hmm. allowing pride and everything to have him count the fighting men. And uh, it says that the angel, I can't remember, withdraw your hand or something. And it was just one angel. Yeah. So then he puts his sword back in his sheath, had just wiped out. David was scrambling uh, at that time. Yeah, because he realized yeah. he, he had a choice of three different things. You know, either your enemies will be chasing you or this. Two times it was, he says, I'd rather be at the hands of God. You know, and so, yeah, there's so many instances where it's like, that's one. Yeah. And then you talk, it talks about where the enemies of Israel, you know, where God intervened and, and it's like, I want happy angels if there's any <laughs> angels around me. <laughs> well, and, 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 and it makes sense then when Jesus said, you know, I could have called, you know, he's telling Peter, you know, mm -hmm. there in the garden, I could have called, you know, 10 legion. Yeah. You know, angels. This We're talking the whole universe. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, okay. You know, I, I guess I've never really thought much about, usually my... my feeling towards angels is, is that they're messengers, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but they're definitely not the little chubby cherubim with their little <laughs> <laughs> No. No. Not, no. not the real my, angels. My oldest son is, is an artist and he draws angels and he <clears throat> makes them warriors. They mm -hmm. are not, they're not, you know, this... Uh, the the Michaelish type. Yeah. Michaelish. He doesn't, you know... Someone brought in an angel set in the in the uh, gathering room 
for the coffee room, mm -hmm. you know, and that's one of those pretty flowing mm -hmm. robe kind of angels, you know, and uh, I think I, think that, I believe there are those. There's a cherubim and seraphim, and it's uh, the guardian angels. <laughs> Debbie says, you know, the guards, and she's talking about there at the tomb, fell like dead men. In fact, we were just talking about that before we got started tonight, mm -hmm. Linda. And she thinks that they they that they were scared because um, the angels are mighty warriors. Yeah, God's people have a guardian angel. Karen says, if I remember correctly, um, they aren't scary, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> She's a poet. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Um, Jesus made reference to that as when he was talking about children and their. The angels who watch over them. So you're actually you're you're correct, Karen. And everybody's seen the pictures of the little kids playing on the log over the water, and then those angels are uh, there, you know. Yeah. And they aren't. They aren't. The guardian angels aren't. Sure. But sure. That's an old time picture that you see in mm -hmm. kitchens and old old yeah. houses. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, but you are right, Karen. We we've been assigned a, a, an angel. Um. But the greatest thing we have is Christ, of course. So. How do we get on the angels tonight? I forget what my question well, was. Well, it was here. these these the, guards at the tomb saw the two sure. angels and. Okay, so um, you know there was nothing you would have added except for angels scare you. <laughs> angels can be scary. You know, I, I I hadn't thought about it, but you're right. You know, they can be. <clears throat> um, it depends on what their angels have a, have assignments. They have specific yep. gift mix, <laughs> if you will. And, and do that. We, we find that to be the case. Let me refresh this. There we go. So we can keep up with the chat. Um, <clears throat> anything you would have anything you would have said today that maybe I missed that you would have said, oh, Pastor, that would have been really cool for you. Mm, no. In the, no. I thought okay. it went really, really well. Oh, oh. I don't know how long it was. It had to have been shorter than the usual. It, it was not as long as I normally preach, so... Well, but. we weren't here last week for the <coughs> service, so I don't know how long you preach then. Uh, I've been hitting 40 to 45 minutes pretty pretty consistently. <laughs> and people just keep kind of looking up at that clock behind. Just uh, <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't worry about it. I told Jay. That's said, what you said. Why, why, you bother, Jay, why, bother, why so? bother to put that clock back up there? I don't pay any attention to it. <laughs> well, that's, it is true and it isn't true. I pay attention to it when it's time to start. Mm -hmm. Once I get rolling with Jesus, just me and Jesus, I don't care. <laughs> so, so that's how that's how we roll around here. Um, okay. Well, t <clears throat> this morning was preaching uh, was preaching about the resurrection and just the conversations, mostly questions that Jesus had mm -hmm. for for those within you know within the hours after his resurrection. Mm -hmm. I thought it was fascinating. And that's where God drew me, right to, right to those conversations. It's like, okay, Lord, I get it. We're gonna talk about conversations. Mm -hmm. And so we did that. Um, and I made reference to, you know, his conversation, don't touch me, don't cling to me. Mm -hmm. The Greek word was right. clean, you know. Um, it has several, several meanings. It can be used in several different ways. Um, to the, <laughs> there's a flash of the church that Rick and you used to go to. Those services last three and sometimes four hours. No kidding. Wow. Wow. You know, Leon's church is, is like that. They go, he goes for like three or four hours. Um, typically three hours, I think he said. But they do so many different things. Um, you know, and there's yeah. some Jewish uh, parts to their to the worship. So I'm not sure if Leon's on with us tonight. He might be. We have seven people on. Charismatic uh, church. Yeah, charismatic. Yeah, they do. They do. They, well, partly because they they sing forever. We sang a lot today. Yeah, we. I did. loved it. Yeah. I loved it actually. Um, but it does make the make service go. So outreach center right down the street from you, and here you are on with us now. We love having you, Karen. Mm -hmm. So, um, back back to the scripture. I, we haven't even gotten our scripture up. What I got? Thirteen minutes. We probably should do that, yeah, Linda. That let's going. throw let's throw the account up there, and I'll read yeah. it. Not that we haven't heard it before. Now, um, this is twenty eight, but in in chapter twenty seven, uh, just to give you a kind of a recap, the um, uh, the the priests have gone to Pilate and they said you know, we need to make this tomb secure. They put a wax seal on it. Um, they placed a guard, a post of guard, uh, 
uh, on on the tomb, and so they're trying to make sure that nobody steals the, bo- the body because that they were they were really concerned with it. So that's where we pick up here. Now, after the Sabbath, towards uh, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb, and behold, there was a great earthquake for uh, an ain- for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came down and rolled back the stone and sat on it. That's intimidating, right, Terry? Then um, his appearance was like lightning and his clothing was white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has risen. What an announcement. Hallelujah. As he said, come and see the place where he lay. Then go and quickly and tell the disciples that he has risen from the dead, and behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. What an, what a message. <clears throat> so they departed quickly uh, from the tomb in, in, with fear and great joy. What a, That's a mixed blessing. And ran to tell his disciples, and behold, <laughs> Jesus met them and said greetings, and they came up and looked and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. And and Jesus said to them, "Do not be afraid. Go and uh, and tell my brothers to go to Galilee." Linda, if you will scroll that up for me, I would appreciate it, so I can because we have a timer in front of that on our end. Thank you. Yeah, pull that. Just pull the bar down, hun. There you go. Thanks. That's good. While they were going, behold, some of the guard went into the city and told the chief priests all that had taken place. And when they had assembled with the elders and taken counsel, they gave a sufficient sum of money to the soldiers and said, tell his disciples uh, and tell people his disciples came by night and stole him away while we were asleep. And if this comes to the governor's ears, we will safely Uh, We will satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. And so they took the money and they ran with it and did it as as, uh, they were directed. Money talks, you know. Mm -hmm. And this story has been spread among the Jews to this day. And then we see the Great Commission where now 11 disciples went to Galilee like they were told to do to the mountain which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. He's referring to uh, some of the doubters, we have Thomas in that picture scenario. And Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I'm with you uh, to the end of the age. And so, interesting, okay? Now, Politics. Politics saved those guards' lives. <laughs> yes, it in did. In those days, if that had happened... They'd have killed those guards. <laughs> Hi, Leon. Glad to have you with us, buddy. Um, what, one of the things I was listening to, I never really thought much about it. I, I've read, you know, the, over this account, but 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 uh, Charles Stanley said something. I was listening this week, you know, as I'm driving around and um, listening to the radio, and he said something that just peaked, tweaked my interest. Okay, if if somebody comes in and robs your house while you're asleep, okay, mm-hmm. and the police show up and they say. Well, will you describe to me what they look like? What are you going to say to them? I was uh, asleep. Asleep, you know, I was asleep. Mm-hmm. So, you know, the, the the priests are paying them to say we were asleep, and mm-hmm. you know, if they were asleep, how do they know it's the disciples? You see, right? You know, how crazy is that? That's what I say. Normally, they would have just done if you lose a prisoner or something or somebody oh, yeah. you're guarding. It's your life for theirs. But in this case, they needed somebody to help them reinforce a lie. So they need a live body to do that. So <laughs> the politics saved their lives. Well, one of the things I want to say, I, because, because time is going fast. One of the things I want to say to our listeners, I don't know, when you when you read through the accounts in the scripture, especially the gospels, there, there it's several, several places in the gospel where it does this kind of thing. Um, I want to remind you that you're you're reading you're reading the accounts from uh, as the Holy Spirit leads. We we believe that uh, that all Scripture is God breathed, but you're reading the accounts from each of the of the gospel writers' perspective. 
okay? When I, when I was preaching from John today, they tell, and, and John is focused on Mary Magdalene. So mm-hmm. there's a point somewhere in that scenario where Mary Magdalene is alone there in, in still, while it's still dark. Because mm-hmm. John lets us know that. Then I just read from, I read from Matthew, and you, you, you see where I read that, that there were two Marys there. Mm-hmm. Now that that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that the scriptures are working against themselves. What what it means is is that we're getting the story in 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 fragments. Okay, yeah. so we we know as you put all the fragments together that there were things that were happening. You know, Mary Magdalene, I would suspect, got there first. You know, but the other Mary shows up. You know, when the angel sitting on on there. Or it could be, as I'm, as I recount the 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 account, you know, uh, the tomb is open. They both get there. The other Mary leaves at some point. We're just not given that information. The, you know, the writers didn't bother to put it all there. So, I, and I and I bring this I bring this to you guys because I, I just sometimes I think we get into a panic because everything doesn't line up perfectly. But you have to remember that the writers are are giving us fragments, and John actually says that he said everything that, that happened. Yeah, I didn't I didn't account for everything. What I'm interested in accounting for is that you would know that he is the Christ, that he that he that he was resurrected. Yeah. Okay, that he's the Son of God, and and that if you believe in him, you too can have life. That's my point of of sharing all this information, mm-hmm. and so he. And I and I got that sense when I was when I was studying for for this message. I got that sense from John that John had that John wanted to tell the story, what he recalled of it. But he didn't he didn't sit down and and he wasn't like in the court making a manuscript of every everything that happened. And so we get the story, we get the account of the resurrection from from the gospel writers. In, in, in fragments and in bits and pieces and then you know we're left to fit them in places and sometimes you know they cause us to, to say well wait a minute I thought I was just Mary you know John just said talks about Mary doesn't mean the other Mary wasn't there um, <clears throat> it's John who says when we were talking about this today you know who says to Mary Magdalene don't touch me and then I just read in Matthew you know where when he but but if you pay t- real close attention mm-hmm. he Terry, we, we see that Jesus has appeared to them. Now, and John doesn't talk about the women being there in that, that meeting, you know, when he first appeared to him. But obviously, you know, because the, the ladies are then clinging to his feet when he reappears to them that first day. So you, as you put this stuff together, and I just, I just want to say to our audience, you know, as you read these accounts, don't get shook because they don't seem... It's, it's a Western mindset. We want all our ducks in, in a row. And most of us really like our ducks in a row. You know, but, but it is. Go ahead. I, I you, you look at something like this, though, if you've been involved in any kind of, uh, even today, you know, it talks about back then you only make a decision on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Mm-hmm. But even today, you ask any police officer, that's involved in anything, any kind of investigation. If you take five different people that were witnesses, you'll get five different stories. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's exactly the same way. People notice different things. Different things catch their attention. Now, when you're focused on a certain thing, you're gonna miss a whole lot of details of other things that are going on. So it's really no different. Actually, it's more, makes it to me more real. If you had three or four people tell you exactly the same thing. All that tells me is they all got together and, and got put their story together. Yeah. Whereas these accounts to me are more believable just because there is that difference there. Right, it, it, it wasn't something that they all got down. You, you exactly. Remember, you, you, you were raised with several kids, right? Mm-hmm. Remember when you, when you did something wrong yep. and you all you <laughs> got with your brothers and you, you okay. were getting your story. Here's what to, we're going to tell them. This is know. what we're going to, yeah, you yeah. rehearsed the story. You know, That's we're all when gonna, you start <laughs> getting suspicious if you've got any experience. But that doesn't take place in the scriptures. No. And I love that. You know, it's actually, <clears throat> you're right, it's actually healthy and it's real and, and, and it's out there in truth. Yeah, you know, there's no pretense. There's no, there's no. We all getting our stories together, kind of thing. And, uh, but yeah, really, really cool. 
the guys are quiet tonight. It's an exciting. I don't know if they're just tired. You know, today's been a a charged, at least for us, it, it's mm. been charged and energized. That um, kind of thing. But 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 I but I love that that, that God gives us that. Mm -hmm. You know, we get the we get. To, to piece it together. And that's one of the things that we do as a pastor when we're preaching, we're trying to get the story right. And so we try to, you know, and, and, it, and it helps, it helps us to stay, you know, in, in the realms of truth. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to make a doctrinal statement. Kind of like what I said today on, on the touchings, you know, yep. when I suggested that, that there may be more to this, you know, I, I warned you guys, now don't, don't develop a church around mm -hmm. that doctrine, yep. Yep. you know, um, and, and, and part part of that, Terry, because you said to me, well, Pastor, that's how I, I actually learned it. Um, but the Orthodox, and it, part of it is because you have these accounts where we do see that they were touching him. You know, and, and, and so the church has tried to to grapple with that and wrap, mm -hmm. their, wrap their heads around around that. And, and so the Orthodox, from what I'm understanding, the Orthodox understanding of that is is, is that, you know, don't, don't cling to me now, you know. But I think there's something to this, don't touch me. Mm -hmm. You know, I won't re preach it, Terry, but yeah, yeah, I think there's more to it than, than just that. But it was a suggestion, it wasn't, it wasn't uh, a doctrine of the church. And the Holy Spirit um, protected the important facts, yeah, yeah, Debbie. The Holy Spirit did do that. Go ahead and throw that comment up there of uh, the important <coughs> facts. Um, this, the scriptures, um, are, are amazingly uh, correct and, and is the most dependable book this this world has ever seen uh historically i'm down to a minute and i need to kind of wrap this up and then stay for the post show that's when things get really really lively but let me say this before i get to wrapping uh, about our church um the point is the point is and no gospel writer fails to mention this that he was dead now he's alive mm -hmm. he is resurrected and he is deity and he is the son of god and uh, they each find their own way to 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 magnify that and so we're just thankful that that we serve a risen savior and that he's alive hey if you're looking for a church join us at 41028 street southwest rochester minnesota we all took a vote today we really want tim to make breakfast every week but there's no promises with that but if you show up we promise we, we will love on you because God, we believe that God sent you. God bless and uh, have a blessed resurrection day.